Hello everyone. Yes, and we are live. That's my phone telling me that we are live. Give me a second folks, I am just joining in. can hear me if, uh, if you cannot hear me just let me know um, I think my mic is picking up my voice just fine but let me know in the case and you can see me as well hey Sue how are you you recently placed an order didn't you or was it another Sue I'm decorating these small boat bowls. Can you see them? Let's try to change the camera. It's like you tell me fine, that's good. Let's see. There we go. Now you can see. This is a painstaking part of decorating each piece separately. Makes it all the more fun. So honestly, I've been procrastinating decorating all of these. And the only way for me to get over the procrastination is by doing it live so that I'm accountable. So use these uh, syringe bottles which help me paint this fairly quickly. It does take a while to figure out how to use them well without making a mess because believe me, I have been there. Hey Stacy, thank you. I'm going to have a bunch of these uh, available for purchase uh, and uh, I'm going to have, how many are there? I think 16 or 17 of these are going to be ready. Uh, these, hopefully I'm going to fire them um, tonight, maybe. I don't think tonight will be possible. I shouldn't estimate. I have a lot of decorating stuff to do. But, uh, <laughs> hey Wendy. Yes, it is one of your favorite patterns and I'm going to be glazing some in grey. If that's not temptation enough, I don't know what is. And I'm so glad, Sue. Thank you for helping me get some work done. You can always use the company. This is all very random. I don't follow a pattern or anything. I just do whatever I feel like. This is going to be a green bowl. And there was a request of some of these bowls in certain colors. So I'm definitely going to do that. And also, I'm going to do extras as well because I want that 
lovely shot with all the different colored bowls because I don't think I have a collective picture of these small size bowls. I have one of the bigger bowls that I posted recently I think. I don't know but And I currently do have a listing of these for me to order. So if you're interested in any particular color, uh, you can place that order now and uh, you'll be able to get it. I can place it in that color based on whatever it was somewhere. So this I'm doing in red and blue, but overall it's going to get a green glaze over it. And it, I think it looks really nice with the green, red and blue on it. So from these great ice cream bowls. So I have floral patterns. Paisley patterns and everything else in between. Did you all get to hear that waterfall? That is the upstairs bathroom. Since my parents are visiting, the guest bathroom is now occupied. So it gets used when I'm in the studio here. <coughs> well, good to see you too, Sue. Thank you for joining in. Um, oh, I'm doing the gray bowls now. Wendy, are you there? Speak up now. Black color accent. With the gray bowls. And I apologize to all the Patreon supporters that I haven't been going live as much as I was previously. Uh, the main reason being that uh, my parents have um, are visiting us currently. So life has been busy. Uh, it's nice to have them over and uh, so we've been going places, you know, doing whatever kind of social stuff we can do. Uh, they are enjoying Casper's company a lot, so that's nice. I think it's simple for the day.
a little bit of red accents, but it's not that grey gold. It's black, of course. Uh, this one is going to be purple. So purple, I realize the red doesn't look that good. The black and the blue work a lot better. I'll do something different this time. Some really bold blue accents. Can you see how that comes out? Same thing. Let's do this one. guys are going to get a blue overall today so I'm going to be doing them again black and blues. The blue underglaze that I'm applying that is a little too thin for my liking, but it's just one of those troublesome underglazes which is always different. It's always fun trying to figure out whether it's going to be too thin or too thick. And I don't thin them down, it just thins out just sitting in the bottle. Yeah, usually most of the underglaze is thick enough. The blue I've realized uh, thins out. Why? I do not know. So I have to be careful as to how much pressure to apply to the bottle. So, it's a very delicate touch. To remember that I'm applying the blue and the blue is not to squeeze too hard on the bottom.
that was the last one of these. Now, the next thing I have are the fine lip mugs, which I need to apply on the glaze too. But I need to decide what colors to do for everything. I like these bottles because you know they have the tip, but they also have a needle in the lid which keeps the what do you call this the nozzle of it um, open and doesn't let it clog. But for this one, I don't have that, but I just put these two pins on it to make sure you know it doesn't clog till it's time for me to use it up again. The next comes from Mugs. markings here this is a emergency okay so I know I need one I need blue I need purple I need two green purples blue purples at least and that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 2 of each, um, some blue, some green, blue, green blue, a green purple, green purple, Does that make sense to anyone? Probably not. So Blue, and green, blue, and I have green, purple, and I have blue, purple. And I'm writing numbers one, two, three, four, five because I'm not so easy. Yes, I'm doing mugs now. So uh, these are the fines, uh, fine net mugs, you know, which have the color stripes. Let me show you a thing. This is how they look uh, finished, the fine neck ones, but their glazing process is a lot more complex. 
because of the multiple colors in this um, I need to paint on this red stripe and a blue stripe for the mug that I want to glaze in the honey and blue combination and for this one I'm painting on a blue stripe and a purple stripe for the green and blue so I've kind of made these permutation combinations and I keep changing them as well so that there's a variety and I keep changing the thickness of the stripe but I basically based on like I have currently only one of these honey blue marks left and two of the green blue marks left uh, and I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen I have 15 mugs which I can glaze in any color I want. Some of them are for orders. So, oh, you have the one blue, green one, kind of like this one, right? Yeah. So, so based on how many orders I have, I'll glaze those. So those I assign first, and then the remaining I'll just glaze equally so that I have uh, an equal number of all the colors possible. Uh, if in any particular mug design there is one that you know is more popular then I usually glaze more in that but uh, for these mugs it's uh, usually been like uh, they all just go pretty quickly you really love that one in your left hand or the this one this blue green one. I have another green blue one and I'll show you like what variation they can be. So so this again is green and blue and this one is also green and blue but based on the thickness of the stripe that I do, the intensity of color, how much I overlap the green and blue, they both still look different, but they still belong together. So that's the reason why it's like it's hard for me to take a picture of every mug that I make individually and then keep track of which mug is there in which listing. I usually say a green and a blue and what pictures I have is the stock picture. Oh yeah, the honey and blue one. The honey and blue is my favorite color combination. And this has particularly, it feels like it has like seven stripes going on in it. It also makes like a purplish stripe out there, which I really like. And uh, yeah, I really like this one. So this one is still there. It's still there in my shop. make a nice pairing with your honey and with your uh, blue and green mark. Now I reveal my secrets as to how I do these stripes. There's no secret. I paint on these and then uh, it gets painful I think sometimes. And I don't try to be very exact because I kind of like the, um, you know, the random look of the stripes. So sometimes I'll make a thicker one. So Stacy, if you order now, let me know in the notes to the seller. You know, you get a message pop up that you want the one that was in the live feed. That's the only one I have currently, and it's listed in the ready to ship ones. Just saying, in case you want that particular one. Because these are again going to be different than the one, you know, I don't know how they're going to be different. I can try making it the same, but I know how my mind works. It's, uh, while glazing, I'll change my mind how thick I want stripes or how thin I want them. 
if I want even the same colors. So. That's why I always mention in my listing that you know there is going to be variation from piece to piece. So you will not expect them to be identical. So that is all I have to do with the red. I have to put the blue stripe. This blue goes as the bottom stripe. It's a very electric blue kind of thing, but but you know I do wash them down, so that's the next step involved in doing this. Identical is definitely boring. So I I don't even try to match things. It's like there is no point to it. And what's the point of making it handmade and everything? It is just gonna look like commercial identical stuff, right? And some get the more intensity of the colors on some I do a second brush stroke so that increases the intensity on some not and also when I sponge them off I usually uh, you know some I'll aggressively sponge off the extra glaze on some I want I'll just leave it so this one let's make a bigger thicker blue stroke More than one way is to do these. Okay. So why working when you're seeing different variations of these, right? So now I want to do more blue purple one and blue green blue ones, in which the blue stripe goes on top. I think I will do a green. And things like this, where you know things are dripped down. I, I would say, yeah. In fact, I found that that's what gives it a more hand spun kind of look. Uh, is that the mug like the jumbo? No, it's the same four button mugs. The jumbo mugs have five buttons on them, and I can show you the comparison. I think I have a color spike mug. So this is the this is the jumbo color stripe mark that has five buttons on it, and uh, this is my regular sixteen ounce uh, coffee mug. So that's also in the honey blue tones, and that's jumbo. Sixteen and twenty ounces. 
So yeah, there's a separate listing for the big coffee mug and the jumbo is a jumbo. This dude is gonna get this part of Again, I'm placing the blue stripe in a slightly different position. Yeah, the regular 16 ounce is uh, the most popular size and it's my favorite size too. I do think the jumbo is too big, but you know, I'm not gonna judge any time. You have it in your card. Yeah. Okay, so now we got the blue. So this is two five, and I think all of these is a two five, three 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 five. Okay. All of these are gonna get a blue stripe at the bottom and a purple stripe at the top. So first I'm just gonna finish up all the blue stripes at the bottom. That's the particular uh, 16 ounce honey blue mug that you want. That's the exact one I'll ship you. I'm not going to wait for all of these to be glazed to ship you. So, and I can ship it out from all of them. thing I miss about live shows is because even if you know honey blue is the color that you want or something you can uh, you know, pick and choose which variation of honey blue you would like and um, means yes online I could take a picture of all the honey blue marks which have come out from the kiln but it gets very time consuming to do that for every small piece that I do so if I start doing that, <laughs> the turnaround time to get anything done will be even longer. And that's what I tell everyone. It's like whenever you're checking out my shop, check the ready to ship. And if you are particular, I, uh, you know, and go like, no, I really want to see which are the variations there are. You can always reach out to me and ask me and I will show you. I will take pictures of all the honey blooms I have and you can choose from that. Because I understand that and it's totally fair if you are particular on which one you want. It's just that I can't just do it every time I unload the kiln. Um, I can do it if somebody requests pictures. Yay, order it so. So now I think in that size I probably have only the blue green mugs, which you already have. So I'm not gonna try to sell you that one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stacy. Oh my goodness, did you see that pink spot? Did you see that? That is not going to get glazed. The glaze is not going to catch on that pink spot. That is sad. So, I can do one of two things. I'm going to burn this and see if I can burn out the wax. And that way I can still fire it. But uh, I'm going to keep this separate so I remember I need to do something with it. I hate it when that happens. Uh, but it always does, it always. 
nothing. It's a good thing I caught it now. Like I can even refire that piece and make sure that wax is totally burnt out. But it's a small spot on the handle, and I think I can get rid of it by just a blow torch. But I have uh, noticed sometimes I land up cracking the piece with a blow torch as well. So it's not always the best approach. Soap dramas have started. My parents love watching Indian soaps. The pink is the wax, yes. So I put the wax at the bottom of the mug so that the glaze doesn't stick on it. But uh, sometimes while applying, because it is liquid wax that you know I apply with a sponge brush out here, sometimes it gets on my fingers or it just drips and makes a spot. And the the wax resist actually comes like in a whitish green color and I have added that food coloring pink to it so that I can see if it lands where it's supposed to land and not where it's not supposed to land. So that's how I could spot that wax that was on the handle. If it was you know in the original white color uh, I wouldn't be able to tell. And the pink color uh, you have seen you have my marks <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the pink color totally uh, burns out in the fire, so it's just food color. All organic material just burns out in the joint, so that is not an issue. Photo strike. And the wax, uh, there are two ways to remove it, like I said, with a blow torch. Or some people have managed with a matte stick as well, but I, I, I just want to be extremely sure that it's totally gone because what's the point? So I use a blow torch and burn it. But the problem with the blow torch is you can land up overheating the mug and it can crack while you're doing the blow torching. You have to be careful about that, and uh, and the other way is you can uh, put the mug back in the best fire kiln. You know, in that first firing that I do, and it'll just burn it off without affecting anything. And usually, when that wax resist mess is a lot bigger than this tiny dot, that's what I do. I actually have an example of that too. Um, so, making this coffee pot, which gets a lid on it, and again it would get all those decorations and everything, it has decoration, but you can see while applying the wax, my brush was overloaded and I landed up pouring the wax excessively on the inside of the lid. And because of the design of this mug, this is not the first time. This lid i tried glazing it before and i did the exact same thing and i despised it again and again when i was wax resisting today i again made the same mess so i'm going to despise it again uh, this with a blow torch i won't be able to burn it off from all the fine uh design elements and stuff so the safest thing is just to despise it again and we'll be fine. But that's what it will have to wait for its next fire.
but once the piece is glazed and suppose I had missed that wax spot uh, even though there might be glaze on top of it during the firing it might it will run off and it will create a, you know a bare clay spot out there which is something you cannot go back for and it just remains like that the mug is still functional but uh, I cannot sell it at full price uh, I used to have like second sales and stuff so I used to sell off, uh, you know, faulty nuts like that at half price there. But I don't. Well, those sales we used to have in Tacoma once a year. Didn't have it last year because of COVID. I do have some nuts. Now I know this one is going to be a problem. I can almost see that there is actually an air pocket on and there is no point for me to fire the same. So that's a reject. But still make a functional mark. Right. Why bother firing things and glazing them when they are not going to be perfect at the end? to burn resources for no reason. Nice big pocket strike there. So I don't know which combination this is, like this is the green and purple, sometimes it's the blue and purple, but the thickness of stripe I'm just randomly changing, position of stripe I'm changing, sometimes I'll do it way up here, sometimes I'll do it kind of in the middle. That's a fun part and you're the artist, you can decide how you would like things to be. Three more months and then have to take a break. I have to wait for all of this to uh, dry up a little. Yes, I did finish my soft spin. Uh, I didn't finish plying it, but my uh, the picture I posted uh, yesterday uh, that was the soft spin all done. Uh, there was only a little bit of fiber there. But the bobbin looked so nice as it was. I had to take a picture right then. So it took me another five minutes to finish the rest of the spin. Uh, now I'm just resting the singles. And uh, I will ply later. Uh, I'll probably ply it in a day or two. I'm just... I'm kind of not sure what spin to start on next. Um, I do want to uh, continue on that big spin that I was doing on my sweater spin, uh, which I was doing on my lendron. Um, it's just that uh, that's a treadle wheel, which I, you know, I'm doing on the lendron and I'm enjoying doing it on the lendron. The problem with that is that. Um, the last few days have been crazy hot if you haven't heard uh, and I didn't feel like traveling on any wheel in that heat. So I basically was just uh, using the sparrow which I really liked for spinning fine and for not having to travel. So, so that was nice very easy to get that sock spin out of the way and it is the fastest I have finished a sock spin. So that went well, but now I have to um, figure out how to, what to do next. It, it's finally cooled down that I can do um, 
the my sweater spin again. But so that's that's what I'll probably do next. But yeah. That's about it uh, to wait for these to dry. Then I'm going to sponge off all the underglazes. And uh, now I have a mug to pack up and ship out to you, Stacy. So that's going to happen. I'll ship it out tomorrow. So thank you, everyone, whoever has joined in. Uh, again, you can visit my website, which is mentioned there, creativewithclay.com. If there are pieces that are ready to ship, uh, it means they are ready to ship. If it's not, then place a made to order. As you can see, there are mugs going in this firing, which will be ready. And as soon as they are ready, I'll post them. But if you did place a made to order one, you get priority because you ordered first. So that's how that works. All right, take care, Stacy. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for your purchase. Good night. Bye.